I have some worrying information about the RTX 4080. Raptor Lake is looking insane and an exciting new display just launched. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by Surfshark. Surfshark is an easy one-click VPN that protects your identity online and allows you to browse the web without having to worry about websites stealing your data. Additionally, Surfshark allows you to watch whatever content you want no matter what country you're in. Many apps and services such as Disney Plus or Netflix have different movies available depending on your location, but with Surfshark you can change your online location, allowing you to get the most out of your digital subscriptions. And best of all, you can connect an unlimited amount of devices on a single subscription and it comes with a 30 day money back guarantee. So if you want to protect your privacy online and get the most out of your online subscriptions, be sure to check the link in the description below and use code graphically to get an incredible 83% off plus 3 months free on a 20 four month purchase. That's right, I got some information about the RTX 480 that I want to share with you guys today that I think you're going to find very shocking. Now, this information comes from the prominent leaker Comp87 Kimi over on Twitter, and here's what he had to say about the RTX 4080. Now, this is in response to a tweet that he made over in June 1st when he was talking about the TGP of the various different cards, including the RTX 4090, 4080, and 4070. And it looks like just today he made a response to that tweet that says possible RTX 4080 PG 139 SKU 360 has a 420 watt TGP still uses 8103. Now another thing that he did mention which wasn't in this original tweet here but he tweeted over on June 5th was quote I don't care about the real release date I'm just curious about the performance of the RTX 4060 which consumes more power than the RTX 3070. Uh, so yeah as you can see here he's been dropping a lot of information about the RTX 40 series when it comes to their power targets. Now the RTX 4060 specifically drawing more power than the 3070 means that it's going to draw more power power than 220 watts, which is going to be quite a bit for a 60 class card. Now taking a look at the RTX 4080, as I do know a lot of you are going to be very excited to go ahead and pick up this card, uh, that thing drawing 420 watts is going to be absolutely insane. Now I don't know 100% for sure if he means that this is going to be like the final TGP of that card, because he does say possibly at the beginning, but the way it's worded kind of makes it look like uh, he's somewhat confirming it. So we'll just have to wait and see, time will tell whether or not it really is going to be 420 watts. But real quick, if we take a look at the RTX 4060 all the way through the RTX 4090 Ti just to get an idea of just how much power these cards could really be drawing if we compare them to the RTX 30 series first starting off with the RTX 4060 if this does indeed draw more than 220 watts and let's just go ahead and say it draws 230 watts just to be safe here well if we compare that to the 3060 that means it's going to draw 35 percent more power than the RTX 3060 moving on to the RTX 4070 this one is rumored by Comp87 Kimi to draw 300 watts again over the RTX 3070 220 watts that means it's going to be a 36% increase in the TGP as well now moving on to the RTX 4080 this one is apparently going to have a 420 watt TGP according to his latest leak which if you compare that to the RTX 3080 with its 320 watt TDP that means it's going to be a 31% increase so you know what originally when I was taking a look at all these I was thinking 420 watts there's just no way that could possibly be the case but taking a look at all these various different graphics cards it's starting to look like basically every single SKU is going to see at least a 30% increase in its TDP, or at least its TGP, which is starting to make 420 watts not actually sound that unreasonable. Now, personally, I believe it's going to be a little bit closer to 400 watts, or possibly even less than 400 watts, but we do have to keep in mind that 420 watts is a possibility, at least according to all the various different leaks and rumors, and if that is the case, then yeah, you guys are definitely going to need to go ahead and upgrade your power supply, because 400 plus watts sustained is going to be a lot of power, and those peak power draw moments are going to be absolutely insane, but now let's go ahead and move on to the RTX 4090, which is rumored to draw 450 watts, which if you compare that to the RTX 3090, is once again going to be a 29% increase. And then the RTX 4090 Ti is actually rumored to draw 600 watts, which is going to be again over 30% at 33% increase in the TGP. So yeah, once again, we're looking like the RTX 40 series as a whole is going to be drawing a lot more power than the RTX 30 series. And if you don't have at least a 1,000 watt power supply and you're looking at something like the 4080 or higher, you might want to consider waiting until a 1000 watt power supply does end up coming out with the new PCIe 5.0 spec so you can go ahead and be sure that your new power supply is actually going to be able to run cards like the 4080 through the 4090 Ti.
But now let's quickly talk about Raptor Lake because I haven't really talked about Raptor Lake a whole lot on this channel because honestly guys, originally I wasn't expecting Raptor Lake to be too much of an increase over Alder Lake, but as more and more of these performance leaks start to come out, it's starting to look like, well, Raptor Lake could actually end up being a little bit better than I was originally thinking. Now the latest leak actually was found over on Twitter by Tom Appysack, and if you don't know, Raptor Lake is going to be the CPU generation that comes after Alder Lake, and according to Tom Appysack, apparently the engineering sample that was spotted did have a boost clock up to 4.6 GHz and a base clock of 2.4 gigahertz which is going to be relatively low compared to what we're actually expecting to be 5.8 gigahertz on the final sample but even just this 4.6 gigahertz engineering sample at least according to a user bench benchmark which by the way user bench is an absolutely terrible website and i don't think they're going to be uh, the most accurate or reliable source but either way this is what we have to go on right now and taking a look here we can see that actually this raptor lake engineering sample was able to score six percent higher in the single core performance when compared to the alder lake cpu so six percent it doesn't really sound like a whole lot but once again apparently this thing is only boosting up to 4.6 gigahertz so if it did actually boost up to 5.8 gigahertz which by the way 5.8 gigahertz would actually be 26 percent higher that would actually in theory make it 30 percent higher in its single core performance when compared to alder lake which is absolutely insane now realistically guys i am not expecting this thing to be like 30 percent plus of an improvement in its single core performance when compared to alder lake i'm probably expecting somewhere between 10 and 20 percent but stuff like this is making me start to believe well maybe raptor like is going to be a bigger upgrade than we were originally thinking and when you include that it's possibly going to have 20 pcie 5 lanes allowing you to run a gpu with pcie 5 and a pcie 5 ssd well it's going to be actually at least in my opinion a pretty good next generation platform but now let's go ahead and wrap this video up by talking about samsung's brand new odyssey neo g8 which by the way if you haven't heard about this this is going to be the first 4k 240 hertz display it just went live today it is over on their website if you go ahead and search for it you'll see it you can buy it right now and if you reserved it you were able to get $50 off. Uh, now, this thing isn't going to be available, it looks like, for at least a month. That's how long it's going to take for them to actually get it to you, but yes, you can technically purchase it right now, and not only is it going to be a 4K 240Hz display, but on top of that, Samsung is claiming that it's going to be able to hit up to 2,000 nits of brightness. Now, realistically, guys, I don't think you're going to see 2,000 nits of brightness in actual games. I think it's going to be more of something that you can just measure off of the display, but you know what? Either way you look at it, it looks like this is going to be a very bright display. It's going to be possibly a pretty fast display is they're also claiming one millisecond response times and again having 4k at 240 hz is absolutely insane and honestly i would consider that to be the holy grail especially at 32 inches but hey that's just what i think how much power do you think the rtx 4070 4080 and 4090 are really gonna draw let me know your guys thoughts in the comments below and of course i'll see you in the next video if you made it to the end of the video be sure to drop a like every time you do so amd and nvidia get more stock also, if you want to see more, click here. You won't be disappointed.